Meanwhile, South Sudan's first vice president, Taban Dengai, now says he is not aware of any incidents of rape and attacks against foreigners involving South Sudanese troops during the conflict in Juba. Speaking in Nairobi, Deng said the government would investigate any such claims. Deng, who was appointed first vice president in place of rebel leader Rick Mashar, addressed a press conference in Nairobi hours after meeting Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta. President Kenyatta says that the meeting focused on the implementation of the peace deal between the conflicting parties in South Sudan in line with recent recommendations from the regional body EGAD. Deng said that South Sudan is also seeking food relief from Kenya owing to the very difficult economic times the country is facing. Let's get more details and perspective on this from CCTV's Patrick Oyet, who joins us live on the line from South Sudan's capital, Juba. Patrick, Vice President Taban Deng has denied any knowledge of the alleged rapes and attacks on foreigners by South Sudan's troops. Have we had any further reactions on this from the government there? Yes, I mean, uh, the reaction here is just the same. The Minister of Information has been talking a lot about uh, this issue he has said. Of course, this uh, issue of uh, rape could have happened, but when the report says it is done by men in uniform, he says this does not mean it is government troops because South Sudan has so many people putting on armed, army uniform for that matter. For example, the government says, yes, the government troops put on army uniform, but the opposition troops also put on army uniform. And there are also armed groups. For example, in South Sudan, uh, since the conflict between Khartoum and Cuba, there has been a lot of uh, armed people around before the signing of the comprehensive peace agreement that brought independence eventually. It looks like something which is far behind, but indeed, us who are here in Cuba, we know, or in South Sudan, we know that yeah, there are a lot of people who are in armed opposition or with fighting with the, uh, alongside the government. And later, when the peace agreement was signed, they were not absorbed into the armed forces. These people have their guns, they have their uniforms, they are there sometimes, they carry a robbery and so forth. So this is uh, the, the defense the government has put out. They say there are many people who wear army uniforms. So therefore, the government cannot squarely be blamed for, for this. This is the response we've got from here. It's the same uh, like the one you just mentioned from the first vice president. Patrick, the UN has launched a probe into the response by its peacekeepers to those attacks. Is this a move likely to enjoy support in Juba? Yes, 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 I think so. And the people we have spoken to here actually seem to be happy with this move because there have been a lot of calls, especially when the government initially said they are rejected, or let me say, few government officials say they are rejected the UN resolution for deployment of extra 4,000 troops to South Sudan. Many people were saying the 12,500 troops in South Sudan of the UN should first of all be assessed. Their work should be assessed. People should look at, did they perform well? Did they fail? Do they need more troops? Or what exactly are they doing? Are they protecting the civilians? So there was that, that call that, you know, there, there needs to be assessment of the work of the UN peacekeepers in South Sudan. So this coming from the UN Secretary General is going to be something that I think many people would be happy with. They would be willing to, to, to wait for the investigation to be done and later listen to what the report would be like. So, uh, yes, I think both the government and uh, some section of, of the public is going to welcome this move. All right, Patrick Oyet on the line for us from Juba. Many thanks, Patrick.